Thank you for watching Al Jazeera live from Doha. This is the news. My name is Peter Dobby. Your top stories. The Italian Prime Minister says coronavirus restrictions will be extended past the current deadline. That's April the 3rd. On Wednesday, Italy recorded the highest number of deaths in a single day since the outbreak began. Spain's coronavirus death toll has risen by 30% in just a day. 767 deaths have now been reported. The total number of people infected is more than 17,000. A two-week nationwide lockdown is currently in place. There have been no new local coronavirus infections across China for the first time since the outbreak began in December. All new cases are reported to be people returning from overseas. China has now begun easing its lockdown of millions of people. Well, the coronavirus pandemic is affecting billions worldwide and women are uniquely affected. Here's why. They are 70% of the workforce in healthcare and social work fields. Many of them are on the front line of the pandemic and the risk of infection is high. Women are also primary caregivers in most families around the world. School closures and lockdowns mean additional responsibilities and exhaustion. For women who suffer domestic violence, mandatory lockdowns mean being trapped with abusive partners with nowhere to go. Chinese activists are reporting more abuse cases since cities were pushed into lockdown. Women also do nearly 60% of informal jobs, from street cleaning and domestic workers to agricultural and textile employees. Strict quarantine measures in some countries mean no work, therefore no pay. Let's talk now to Mohamed Nasiri. He's the regional director for Asia and the Pacific at the United Nations Women's Organization. Mohamed Nasiri, so this is a double whammy, not only do women make up what more than two thirds of healthcare providers? They're also the cornerstone within the domestic situation. Correct. Um, and um, as as Christian was talking about the economic volatility earlier um, uh, today, uh, it is hitting uh, women even uh, much more. Um, as you rightly said, Peter, it's uh, the workforce of the healthcare system is uh, made out of around 70% women. Uh, these women have been on the front lines, um, putting themselves out there, um, a heroic work that has been uh, seen by the world, uh, not only in the healthcare, but also in the transport, in the logistics, uh, in the scientific research for vaccinations, etc. Yet, um, on average, uh, healthcare workers, uh, women healthcare workers, receive around one third less um, of pay than those of uh, men. Uh, and while they have been provided with uh, protective personal equipment, like uh, their uh, men colleagues, their specific um, requirements uh, have not necessarily been attended to systemically across the board, including menstrual uh, hygiene care. Um, we also need to remember that in many of the countries in the region and across the globe have applied the sheltering home policy, which means that public transport is not functioning um, equally, putting uh, women healthcare workers at a more risk and more vulnerability having to walk back and forth to hospitals and clinics at uh, different times of day and night, exposing them to uh, potential okay. violence uh, against them as well. From the people you're talking to or the organizations you're talking to, are there any big employers or even unions around the world who are aware of this? Because what we're talking about now with the coronavirus may be the new normal. We're using that expression today. We don't know how long this will go on. So you're outlining a systemic problem that exists anyway, which is being made doubly worse because of the coronavirus. So does this come down to employers in part to solve this as an issue? Absolutely. Uh, and as you rightly said, it's going to be the context in which we operate for some time to come. And we've been in touch as you and women with many of our business partners, the private sector and the corporations that we're working with, uh, who have signed on the women empowerment principles. Yesterday, I was on a call with the International Chamber of Commerce, amongst other uh, partners, to look into the economic uh, fragility and the dimension 
that we need to uh, attend to when it comes to uh, attending to the specific needs of women in this industry, but also at large when it comes to the economic fragility um, of many women who are working in the informal sector and in small and micro uh, uh, businesses. Okay, we have to leave it there. Mohammed Nasiri, thanks very much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Thank you.